Okay, uh, this is a review for uh, Phil 210 Ethics 2023 summer. And I'm just going to go through the questions on the exam and, uh, I don't know, discuss them a little bit and try to uh, contextualize them and situate them into uh, with the lectures and what we've been talking about. So, And these are randomized, so the questions are not in any particular order, but I trust you can figure it out. So question one on my end is, for Nietzsche, punishment is supposed to possess the value of awakening the feeling of guilt in the guilty person. However, generally speaking, punishment makes men hard and cold. It concentrates, it sharpens the feeling of alienation, it strengthens the power of resistance. That's a quote uh, right from Genealogy 2, and uh, that's exactly what he says. So there you go. Uh, for Nietzsche, the atheism that results, this is question two, for Nietzsche, the atheism that results culturally from modern science and technology leads finally to a freeing of the human being's conscience from guilt. Uh, this is also pointing at chapter two. Remember, no, athe Nietzsche, Nietzsche is very critical of atheism as much as he is of um, Christianity and Judaism and religion in general and philosophy. He thinks that atheism gives us this uh, false assurance that we're free from our conscience and our guilt. It, it, when, when you're an atheist, you think, oh my gosh, there's no God, I can do whatever I want. A month later, you realize you still possess a moral conscience, but now you have no way of of uh, expiating or, or, uh, or uh, reaching kind of catharsis when it comes to that. Okay. Uh, question three. For Nietzsche, to be incapable of taking one's enemies, one's accidents, even one's misdeeds ser seriously for very long, that is the sign of a weak, or of weak, empty natures in whom there is a deficiency in power to form, to mold, to recuperate, and to forget. This is a quote right from Genealogy, I think 110, and it's the opposite, right? To be incapable of taking your enemies seriously that's the sign of power, of the ability to forget, of, a, of absolute strength, okay? Uh, so it's the reverse there. Question four, for Nietzsche, laughter is schadenfreude, that is laughing at the misfortune of others, or taking laughter is taking delight in the misfortune of others with the addition of a good conscience. That's Nietzsche's theory of laughter. Question five, for Nietzsche, those noble masters whose morality is that of the affirmation of life, created from a pathos of distance, consider the world in terms of good and evil, while slaves, those who deny life, argue for the morality of good and bad. It's the reverse. Slaves argue in terms of good and evil, and that's why resentment is characteristic of slave morality, because you can hate someone you demonize. Someone you, you view as evil, you can hate. And the pathos of distance, the master morality, sees the world not in terms of good and evil, but in terms of good and bad. That is, in terms, in terms of aesthetic ideals, such as good and beautiful, and then therefore base and ugly. Question six, Atheist, atheistic modern science, which occasioned the very death of God, finally results in a radical separation in its essence from Christian theism. So, uh, false, uh, uh, not, mm -hmm. uh, how do I want to put this? Nietzsche thinks, remember, he's a critic of atheism, uh, and he thinks modern science occasioned the death of God, but it doesn't result in a separation from Christian theism. It becomes the latest instantiation of it. Why? Because it still believes in truth and morality. So atheists who still believe in truth and morality are still Christians in Nietzsche's point, from Nietzsche's perspective. For Nietzsche, in punishment, there is so much that is festive, it means simply that the human beings experience a catharsis in their outward expressions of violence and cruelty. That seems pretty straightforward. That is Nietzsche's theory. Nietzsche's hermeneutics of suspicion, or interpretive, uh, suspicious uh, view, suspicious way of interpreting vis-a-vis -vis morality, seeks to discover or uncover the power structures that remain latent in our notions of good and evil. Good, that is Nietzsche's hermeneutics. Uh, for Nietzsche, the will or desire for truth remains a mere guise of the underlying desire for power, the will to power. Everything, including the will to truth, is a is a is a guise or a um, cloak for the will to power includes morality, religion, etc. For Nietzsche, the slave revolt in morality begins when resentment or resentiment itself becomes creative and gives birth to values of resentiment of natures that are denied their true reaction, that of deeds, and compensate themselves with an imaginary revenge. Uh, that's right out of section one, I think either seven or ten. I think it's ten uh, or eleven. Uh, check those. That's a, that's a passage lifted right there. For Nietzsche, Christianity, as opposed to the Dionysian, represents the absolute unconditional affirmation of life characterized by resentment and is as such constitutive of master morality, Christianity, no, represents the absolute denial of life for Nietzsche. And th it's the denial of life or the ascetic ideal that's characteristic or that is characterized by resentment or resentiment. Master morality, on the other hand, is the unconditional affirmation of life. There is no truth. Now, if, there's, if this is true, then it's false. But if it's false, uh, well, 
if there is no truth, then it can't be true that there's no truth. So it must be false. Even if you think there's no truth, this has to be false. So I think there's truth, but I'm going to put false because I think there is truth, false. But even if you say, no, I believe there is no truth, then it's still false because nothing would be true. Everything would be false. So this is a question not just of Nietzsche, but in general about uh, truth and metaphysics and epistemology. You cannot say that it's true there's no truth without contradicting yourself. Same thing with the next one for Nietzsche. The truth is that there is no truth, thus there is no truth is in fact true. Even for Nietzsche, who says there is no truth, he recognizes that he can't say there is no truth uh, without saying that that isn't even true. So this would have to be false as well. So for Nietzsche, everything is false. And for anyone, if they want to be consistent, uh, if you deny the existence of truth, everything would have to be false, including the idea that there is no truth, including Nietzsche's philosophy. For Nietzsche, relativism perspectivism, remember relativism is the idea that everything's relative or perspectivism is everything's relative to your perspective or everything's dependent upon perspectives or opinions. Nietzsche's relativism slash perspectivism argues that moral values, truths, and facts are objective, not subjective. No, it's the opposite. Relativism and perspectivism argue that moral values, truths are subjective, not objective. For Nietzsche, since science works, it requires absolutely no justification for its truth or truth claims. Well, Nietzsche thinks that science works, but it but just because it works doesn't mean it's true. So it absolutely requires justification because just because things work in science don't mean they're, does not mean that they are true. In fact, there are a host of theories in science that work but aren't true. I think in the video I talked about Ptolemaic navigation, um, even to a certain degree, Newtonian uh, physics and mechanics works, but it's not really an accurate representation of the world. Okay, so Nietzsche thinks truth demands justification. Uh, especially in an atheistic worldview. And then for the essay, in your carefully reflected philosophical opinion, what are the implications of Nietzsche's theory of truth for A, morality, and B, reality? Do you agree with him that there are no tr moral truths or that there is no truth at all? If you agree with Nietzsche, how can anything you say be true? I explain how you do not fall into this trap of self-referential incoherence if you do not agree with, if you do not agree with Nietzsche. Explain. So what I'm looking for here is what we just, I just was talking about a second ago. If Nietzsche's theory of truth and morality is right, then nothing's true and there is no morality. What are the implications of that? A lot of people like to think Nietzsche, wow, every, you know, behind everything, religion, God, morality is power. Um, but what are the implications of that? Well, if there is no truth, then nothing's true, including that statement. So if you agree that there's no truth, then everything you say and do is false. But also, there's no morality. That means it would be okay if Nietzsche's right. That means racism would be okay. Oppression, victimization, all that would be okay. So I want you to consider the implications, metaphysically, epistemologically, metaphysically meaning in reality, and epistemologically meaning for your own thoughts. Uh, I want you to consider the implications of Nietzsche's theory of morality, of his meta-ethics. Remember, I don't know if I said this in the videos, but meta-ethics is this, we're going meta with regard to ethics. We're considering, are, are moral values real? What are, what are the conditions for the possibility of these things? Is there the good? Is there the bad? Et cetera. Okay, hope this helps.